everyone and welcome to this Filming Techniques workshop. My name's Janine Riggs and I'm a filmmaker by career. And um, so there's obviously a lot to filmmaking. You've got the planning and preparation stage, um, then the actual filming, and then editing it together you know, into a coherent story because it's one thing to have all this video footage that you've filmed but you then need to sort of cut it together into the story to have it make sense. So um, today we're going to be specifically focusing on filming with iPhones or iPads because we felt like that, w that was the most inclusive medium to use because not everybody has access to a, you know, a DSLR or a broadcast camera and we wanted to make it in as you know, um, broad and inclusive as possible. Um, but obviously you can film with all sorts of different cameras from GoPros to DSLRs to um, you know, iPhones, iPads um, or anything Android. So. Um, what we'll be talking about today, as I said, is specific to iPhones and iPads, just because later on I'll be running a workshop on editing and I needed to make that as inclusive as possible too. So we chose iMovie to do the editing with um, and it just worked out more practical for, for the, those purposes to have iPhones and iPads. But anything you learn today is transferable to any type of camera system. So it's a good general all-round workshop on filming techniques and, and how to get the most out of your camera in order to convey your story. This is part of the Digital Creation Hub by Esperance Community Arts and there's a lot of other presenters who will be focusing on other creative mediums as well in order to help you tell your stories online. Um, I'll also be running a interviewing workshop too with um, Pauline Bonney and an editing workshop down the track. So yeah, feel free to book in for those and sort of, you know, do the whole package if you like. And I'm also available for one-on-one um, -on -one training if anybody has any specific problems or issues they want to work on and have me help them out one-on-one, -on -one, then you can book my time to you know, after this workshop if you still feel like you need some extra help. So, um, in this workshop today we'll be covering planning your, your filming, um, planning your story and having a bit of a strategy because you really need to have the end in mind at the beginning in order to make a successful video. So we'll be looking at different types of videos you can make depending on what your needs are. Um, we'll be looking at different camera angles and different camera movements you can do to sort of make your video more dynamic. Um, we'll be looking at framing up and composition. So, you know, how your footage looks in the screen there's ways that you can frame it up so that um, it's more pleasing to the eye. Um, you know, make sure you've got your main subject. There's the rule of thirds and that's sort of quite a good guideline to stick to when you're filming so that it's a lot more pleasing to the eye and, you know, pleasurable, I guess, for somebody to watch your video. Um, if a lot of people make the mistake of sort of framing up their subject matter right in the centre of the frame and that can actually be quite hard to watch. You know, if you've got too much room above somebody's head, for example, and they're sitting right in the centre of the frame, it can make them look really small and meek and mild. Um, whereas if you frame them up according to the rule of thirds, which is like two lines across the horizon and two lines either side, nine equal parts, and you use one of those connecting grid lines to position your main subject matter, then, yeah, it just creates for a nicer image. Um, so we'll be looking at camera specifications, 
um, things like what resolution to film at. So you might choose, you know, 1080, 1080p, which is HD or high definition, or you might have a really good camera system that offers 4K, but, um, you know, don't be fooled by the better the resolution, the better choice, because 4K can actually be overkill in a lot of instances. And then you end up just having this massive file size that your editing software isn't capable of using. So a lot of the time I recommend just shooting in 1080, which is high definition, HD. Um, we'll also be looking at uh, what format to shoot in um, and how to adjust those settings on your device um, before you start filming. Obviously, you don't want to go changing it halfway through and then having different formats to work with. Um, we'll be looking at audio because audio is a really key element to a video and if you've got really distracting background noises going on like a dripping tap or people talking in a in a group behind you you need to be really aware of that and make sure that's not impacting on if you're filming a person you know you don't want all that distracting background noise taking over what they're saying or if you're filming a beautiful landscape you know you don't want the sound of um, a car whizzing past, you know, and, and spoiling that image for you. So audio um, is a really important part of videography. Uh, we'll also be looking at lighting and, um, you know, being aware of where your key lighting source is coming from, whether it's uh, daylight, sunlight, or if it's artificial lighting. Um, yeah, it's really important to have your, your video well lit, especially if you're filming people because, um, you know, if something's not well lit, it can be really flattering, <laughs> unflattering, <laughs> I mean. Um, and we'll be looking at shooting B-roll. So you have your, a lot of the time, depending on t what type of video you're making, you have your A-roll which is your main subject matter, or it might be um, an interview. And then you have your B-roll, which is all the filler shots that you also need in order to, you know, set up your, um, your story sort of thing. Um, so that's really important to make sure that you get enough footage so that you've got plenty of material to play with when, you, when it comes to editing. And there's all sorts of things that you can use for B-roll. It can be, um, you know, establishing shots, like wide shots of a building. Say if you were filming in here, you might want to set the scene first with a nice wide establishing shot. And then you'd sort of come in and get your cutaway shots, like the faces of all the individual puppets um, as your cutaways. Um, you might also want to get like an aerial shot if you had a drone or, um, you know, um, yeah, there's all sorts of things that you can use as your B-roll to help complement your story. So, yeah, you wouldn't, you, you don't just sort of shoot one angle of one thing the whole time and expect that to make a compelling story. There's, there's a lot of other shots that, that go into the mix as well. And then um, we'll be having a look at storyboarding, which is a way of planning out your video before you even start filming. And it's not always necessary, but it can be a very helpful tool to know how to storyboard. And you don't have to be a brilliant artist to sketch out your pictures. You know, it can just be stick figures or um, just really basic shapes with a brief description of um, how each scene or each shot in your video is going to look um, before you even start filming it. And it's just a way of getting organised up front so that 
you don't spend, you know, you don't waste your time basically and then realise when you're halfway through editing, oh, I should have got that shot, I really need something here and then having to go back and reshoot, you know, other material. So that's what we will hopefully be covering if we have time in a nutshell today um, and, and having a practice filming and um, then you can go away and, and you know, practice your skills and film your material by yourselves but again don't forget you can book in with me if you need extra help doing that and um, then coming back Hopefully, if you, if you are available, come back and learn how to edit your material together a couple of weeks down the track. So, yeah. Any questions so far? <laughs> There's a lot to it, I admit. But, yeah, you don't have to, you know, you don't have to start out with a big project in mind. You know, you can just experiment and, you know, have a little fun project that you're working on and keep practicing and then you get better and better as you go along you know I've been doing this for 20 years so <laughs> and I'm still learning every time I film something um, there is a lot to it and with technology constantly changing you know upgraded camera systems and all the gear that goes with it you're always learning so there is a lot to it but you know you don't have to you, your first production or your second or third productions don't have to look amazing. They can just be fun projects for yourself and as time goes on you'll get better and better at it and more and more confident.